So today we are going to have two things covered. Uh, um, first, we're going to start with uh, foolproof. Uh, uh, could you please give this to my friend over there? Thank you. So we're going to have we're going to have foolproof uh, uh, data entry using iStream, and then after that we're going to start uh, operator overloading. That's that's the plan uh, as far as we can go. So uh, any questions before we begin? Questions? No? Okay, so let's start. <clears throat> so when we are working with CN, <clears throat> this is just a, a series of CNs that I'm doing back to back. We want to understand how CN and how ex, uh, extraction operator works. Extraction operator is those two greater than op uh, things back to back that comes after CN. And insertion operator are, are the ones that comes after C out. When you do insertion operator, you are essentially inserting the information onto console. When you do extract, you extract the information from the console. That's why they are called insertion operators and extraction operator. The real name of those two operators are not insertion and extraction. That's something that they named it after seeing and see out. The real name of those two things are <clears throat> left shift and right shift operators. So. Uh, the one that goes to two greater than signs, that's called the right shift operator. And the, the two that is going to left side, that's called the left shift operator. You're going to find that in 3, 4, 5. That's actually a C operator. It's to shift the bits inside uh, a, a memory to left and right. Okay? So you can kind of push the thing at one side and all the bits inside something shifts to left and right for uh, hardcore uh, low level programming. But you'll find out. In here, it's changed to insertion and extraction operator. It has nothing to do with shifting. Okay. So if we are doing data entry, as you are saying over here, straightforward, when we actually start it, we'll see that hmm. okay. All right. So as soon as we start doing this, uh, as you see, CN is waiting for a number. And as soon as I enter 10, it says you entered 10, 20, enter 20, 30, enter 30, and it goes all the way down. Any problem with that? Are we, we are all okay, right? We, we know how it works. <clears throat> now, what I want to tell you is that extraction operator uh, skips all leading white space characters. Extraction operator skips all, that's one of its behaviors. For all the data entries, regardless of what, string, double, integer, however you do extraction operator, the one that system provides, it skips leading spaces, which means if I enter this, if I run the program, and I'll go like this, and I put 10, it still gets 10. If I go, uh, Tap, 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 space, 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 backspace, and I'll go 20, then it's going to be 20. So it doesn't matter. So essentially what happens over here is this. Why is this thing going so? Okay, essentially that's the reason they're doing that is that every single data entry that you do, leaves a new line inside the keyboard. That's the nature of data entry, console data entry. Every single data entry that you do ends with a return statement at the end because you're hitting the return button, the enter button, right? Enter key on your keyboard. Doing so, you are telling receive the data, but at the same time, you are passing backslash into the keyboard. Therefore, the computer will read, the data entry will read the data and leaves one new line. So the next extraction operator, when it wants to get the information, it has a new line in the keyboard. So it has to skip it to get to the next one. Because of that, all white spaces are being skipped that are leading data entry with extraction operator only. Extraction operator only, not the rest of the stuff that we are going to talk about. Are we okay with this? All right. Actually, you can give the microphone back to the lady behind you over there. 
Let's go. We start from there. Thank you. Yes. We'll do it right now. So with what I was saying over here is uh, I was talking about leading spaces. I haven't talked about post white space characters that are coming after that entry. So for extraction operator, white space character is also a delimiter. What, anybody knows what is delimiter? You know what is delimiter, ma'am? What does it mean? <laughs> Don't be so, you know, try to. Uh, you know what delimiter is, madam? No? Delimiter? Delimiter? You don't? Delimiter means stop sign for data entry. Okay, essentially, when you say this is a delimiter, it, it limits reading, which means it reads, 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 reads. It wants to stop at a certain point. The delimiter are two things. Numero uno, number one, any white space. Number two, anything it cannot. It, anything that doesn't fit the data entry. So if I enter 1, 2, 3, A, 1, 2, 3 will be read as an integer and it stops at A and leaves the A in the keyboard. Okay? So that's how extraction operator works. How the white spaces work after? In here, if I actually do something like this, so it's now waiting for another. If I go 30, if 30 and then I'll go 40, then as you see, the first CN picks up 30, spaces are in the thing, the limiter stops, the other one skips white character, white space characters, picks up the second one and goes through. Are we okay with this? We're okay? All right. So next. I stream objects are extremely shy objects. I, I stream objects, all I stream objects. You only know C in, but soon we're going to find out there is a family of I stream objects that we need to deal with. I stream objects are extremely shy. O stream too, actually. But anyways, if something goes wrong with them, they go into a failed state and they stop working. They're not going to do anything anymore. Okay? So that's what we need to keep our eye on, which means when I, when I do something like this, if what I told the gentleman over there about the limiters happen, if I go 10 A, B, C, now what happens over here? When I hit enter, 10, 1, 0 will be picked up with the first C in reading A. So A becomes 10. A, B, C and new line remaining keyboard, correct? The next C in wants to pick it up, that is B. So next C in faces ABC. It can't read ABC. It says, I'm not going to talk to you. You gave me garbage. Finished. CN will not work, which means all the other CNs will just skip. Take a look. You see? The first one that actually fails is setting the B to zero. But we, we shouldn't assume it does that. That's not a default. Assume that the reading fails and it doesn't do anything. Let's put it that way. And the rest won't even start reading. It's just garbage. OK, so remember, C in, C in, fails, goes into a fail state if something wrong comes in. And that's a beautiful thing. We can actually use that. So two things we learned. White space characters are skipped using extraction operator. So white space characters are skipped using extraction operator. Uh, and delimiters for extraction operator are white space characters and anything that doesn't match current reading. So if I had over here something like this, And in here, I would have str instead of b. And I ran the exact same thing. If I wrote over here one, uh, 10 a, b, c, then what will happen now? <clears throat> Cn will pick up 10, right, and stops at a. 
The next scene wants to read string. Is there anything wrong with that? No. It's going to pick up A, B, C, and then stops at white space character. And then it's going to wait for the next one to go because the other one's going to uh, uh, wait for it. So if I actually hit enter, you see the second one says A, B, C. Now I'm going to go 20 and 30. Got it? So we know exactly how it works. The, what are the limiters, white space characters, how they work, work with extraction operator. And the fact that we have a shy, shy type of uh, object. So I'm going to take this back to B because that was the point I wanted to make. Next thing we want to do over here is to check <coughs> to check if <coughs> we can detect how CN works actually. So in here I'm going to have an integer num and I'm going to read this say four times. So I'm going to go four integer i set to zero, i less than four and i plus plus. I'm going to keep reading a number. I'm going to go CN num, okay? And then what I need to do over here is to check, and let's actually have some kind of a prompt in here. So I'm going to go C out, enter an int. So that's going to get an integer. Now I want to know if C in is OK. C in by itself can be used as a condition. It is programmed that way. If you put C in in a space where a condition being checked, automatically it's going to return true or false for its state, if it's good or it's not. So I can actually do this. I can say if C in, that means all good, else bad things happened. OK? So just doing if C in, you can actually find out. So <clears throat> if, if, it, if this is the case, now I'm going to say over here, ah. I'm going to say read uh, C out. You entered. Num. In here, I'm going to say, uh, Last read failed. And that's another <clears throat> way of showing that CN is actually very shy. Take a look. If I run this program now, it's exactly like I have four things reading back to back. Same thing. So if I go over here 10, it's going to say that. They're going to say 20, 30, and 40. So that worked exactly like the other one, right? But if I actually go like this, <clears throat> if I actually go like this and, and enter, <clears throat> say, 10, then in here I put, uh, I don't know, 10 and I hit enter, all the C ins are going to stop working. And it's going to keep telling you, last read fail, last read, because C is in a failure state now. Are we OK down to this point? Are we OK? Are we OK? All right. Now, when C is in a bad mood, all you need to do is to apologize. When you apologize, you can start working with it again. How do we apologize? The method that apologize tells to see in that the apology is called clear. So it's going to say, if something goes wrong, so I'm going to put it like this. So now, if bad things happen, instead of 
showing an error message, showing <clears throat> just things that have failed, I can simply say, I can say last read failed. Now I can say cn.clear. Now cn.clear doesn't <clears throat> clear the buffer. It apologizes to cn. That's all. Don't think that the garbage are removed from the thing. If I actually write this right now, we're going to have an endless loop. <clears throat> because it keeps clearing and tries to read and can't. So it's going to stop at the same thing forever. If I run this now, if I run this now, I'll go 10, it's fine. But if I go over here 10, then actually it just said it cleared. Oh, yeah, it clears and it goes four times because I have the limit over here. Sorry about that. I, I thought that I'm actually checking the CN in the for loop. I'm not. So uh, nothing happens. It just clears it and it tries it again and clears it and tries it again, but nothing happens. <clears throat> but if I clear it, I can actually, what I can actually do over here is this. So in here, I can actually tell to CN to ignore all the characters inside the keyboard. Whatever is inside keyboard, throw it in garbage. That is done with something we called ignore. So in here, I can say first, CN, clear. That means I apologize. Sorry, go back to normal. And now I have to say, ignore all the garbage in the keyboard. But you cannot just say ignore all the garbage. You have to set a limit. What if an endless amount of garbage is coming? You have to stop at a certain point. So you have to tell to see in what is the maximum number of garbage possible to be in the keyboard. When you don't know, put some unrealistic big, big number. So I'm going to say, phew, I don't know, 10,000 characters. But then you put a stop sign too. Ignore 10,000 characters up to and including the delimiter. What is an obvious delimiter at the end of data entry? New line. Okay? So I can say ignore 10,000 characters or new line, whichever comes first. That means it's going to keep ignoring until it hits new line. And even it eats and throws away that new line. So keyboard becomes completely clean. So essentially, that is the same thing as the keyboard flush you did in IPC 144. Okay? The difference was that in keyboard flush, I think you were just reading up to end of the thing. <clears throat> if there is no backslash and you couldn't do anything, but this one, uh, it flushes. So in here, I should, I should actually say it flushes up to 10,000 characters from keyboard. Okay? Not more than that. Okay, now that it's flushed, now that it's flushed, <coughs> oh, <coughs> now that it's flushed, I can read again. Okay, so if I want four character, four things over there, I better reduce the counter over here to make sure that it's going to, so in here I'm going to say flush, uh, last, so last read failed, I'm going to say over here try again, and go to new line, and Put a, put a thing over here, and then in here I'm going to say I minus minus. Why? Because I want to reduce the loop, right? Uh, it, it wasn't successful. I have four numbers. If the number is successful, it's going to add over there, but if it doesn't, it's just going to stay at the same number over and over. So now this becomes <clears throat> semi-foolproof over here. So if I go control F5 over here like this, <clears throat> oh, I, okay, so I can go 10. Then I can go 10 again. Then it's going to say, uh, last week, uh, enter an end. So it goes back over there. Now I'm going to go 20. Now I'm going to go 20. It's going to say failed. Now I'm going to say 30. Now I'm going to say 40. And then it's going to stop. <clears throat> so it's going to force me to get four entries. <clears throat> Are we clear on this? Yes. Let's try it. No, it won't work. I told you. CN is shy. If it goes bad, it's not going to talk to you. It does. The <laughs> Changing the order is like <laughs> first doing something and then apologizing. That doesn't work, does it? 
Yeah, okay. If somebody does something bad to you, they better first apologize before asking for something else, right? <clears throat> it's like, sorry, I didn't give your money back, but can I have more? Of course not. <laughs> okay, so you have to, yeah. <clears throat> okay, so, uh, yeah, so just to show you, if C in clear is not there and I only have ignore, this is what's going to happen. Okay, why? Because it's every time it's reducing the I and it step stops at the same thing and seeing keeps going through, but seeing won't talk to you, so you're going to have an endless loop. Okay? So that clear is extremely important. <laughs> Stop. Okay, good. It stopped finally. Okay. Ah, all right. So we can't do that. We have to first say sorry. And if you do it the other way, then it's not going to get ignored, okay? If you switch it, then it's not going to get ignored. How to say sorry and try again. Okay, <clears throat> so having said all those things, let's actually take a look at how ignore works. So ignore works like this. Ignore has many different shapes and uh, things. Uh, it has three different, actually, uh, overloads. One accepts nothing. When it accepts nothing, it just gets one thing. Why do I have string over there? I have no idea. Let me remove it. <clears throat> so in here, if I say C in ignore, when C in is in a good state, it's going to ignore one character. And remember that C in, the extraction operator in C in, reads characters and then converts to what you want. So when you say integer, it first reads the character. If it matches an integer, then it converts it and it keeps going. Okay? Which means if I enter over here 123, first it's going to ignore one character, then it's going to start reading. Therefore, it's going to receive 23. Got it? So ignore with nothing, it means one character, no matter what. Are we okay with this? All right. <clears throat> Next one is ignoring with many characters. So if I have something like this, okay, so now I'm not doing num anymore. We know that num, that string, everything is the same. I'm just going to use a string so I can enter anything and demonstrate uh, ignore. It doesn't have to be a string. It could be any data, okay? It doesn't make any difference. Extraction operator works that way. So now <clears throat> if I say ignore three over here and I, uh, and I, uh, uh, run the program, okay? If I go A, B, C, D, E, F, whatever, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, then D, E, F, G is going to be entered. The first three is ignored. Are we okay with this? And remember, ignore needs to read to ignore, which means if I enter something like this over here, if I enter something like this over here, a, B, and I hit enter, that's not going to work out. Why? Because A, B, and enter. So three characters are ignored, but the, nothing is read now. Or if I, even if I, so now, if I, <clears throat> if I enter over here D, E, F, D, E, F is read. And if I, if I read yet another one, if I go over here, let's say I'm going to ignore four characters in here, or five characters in here. Uh, let me run it one more time. So I'm ignoring five characters now. Now when I enter, I'm saying ignoring three characters and I'm ignoring five. Uh, one more time, I'm sorry. But anyways, you know it's five actually, right? So if I say over here A, B, C and I hit enter, again, now it needs another two characters to ignore. So if I say D, E, F, G, H, what it reads is actually 
EFG. Why? Three characters ignored over there. One new line, that's four, and one from this one, total of five. Got it? Okay? For some reason, students make this common mistake that I'm going to add over here. So, in here, I'm going to say uh, E, C in dot ignore, ignore N dot CPP. Okay. Now, a, another common mistake is this. When you say ignore backslash n, you are not telling ignore up to backslash n or ignore a backslash n. There is no such a thing. Who has the microphone? What is a character in C language, type of a character? When I say C-H-A-R, what is the actual type of a character? Do you remember? Do you remember? What is char in C? It falls in what category, seriously? Car. When you say C-H-A-R, what is it? It's an integer. A character is an integer. We don't have anything called character in C language. It's a big lie. You remember, if you say printf percent C and you put 65, capital A is printed. Percent C essentially means I want the shape, shape of this ASCII code to get printed. And because character is only one byte, it suits the ASCII code, therefore it's being used. You follow? In here, there is no overload with a character. There is an overload with integer. When you put character as first argument, C in reads it as a small integer. What is the ASCII code of backslash n? 10. So this is going to ignore 10 characters. It has nothing to do with backslash n. OK? So, Understand the language and use it accordingly. I see that mistake all the time. Now, if I run this program, again, it's saying ignoring three characters. Oh, because I changed this one. <laughs> OK, I made a mistake. Just a second. Okay, we don't want that. Now let's let's run it one more time. Now take a look. <clears throat> now, oh. <laughs> how, uh, how do I make that backslash and actually print backslash? And do you remember? It didn't print backslash. And I want to print backslash. And how do I do that? Do you remember? Do you remember? Give it to next. Do you remember? Escape one more. Escape the sign one more time, or yeah, two more, one more time. That's perfectly correct. Yeah, that was easy. So why didn't you say you're telling him to give the answer? <laughs> He's telling to the guy. Give the microphone to them. So you tell him yourself. <laughs> yeah, I forgot. I should have put two backslashes in here. I'm a bad person. There you go. So so yeah, you know it's backslashing, right? So I go A B C D E F G H. I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P. And when you hit, you will see exactly 10 characters are uh, skipped. Actually, nine and a new, uh, actually, no, this is 10. Are we okay? Are we okay? Why everybody's shy to talk? Nobody sees your faces, right? You can be anyone. You know, you can change your voice and talk with a You know, <laughs> nobody will know it's you. Just talk. It's good for you. All right. Okay. So now we know yeah. we shouldn't do that. Oh. Now we know we shouldn't do that. So here is so we know that. And the last one is exactly what you did. 
And the last one is exact. Why is it ZAA? I copied the ZAA note over there. N A A zero uh, eight. Okay, <clears throat> and the other one is the good old one that we just learned at the beginning. <clears throat> so that's the one, and that's essentially ignoring up to something, up to and including something. Now in here, I'm putting x, so it's gonna. Ignore everything up to x. Now, if I run the program, you will see that. Now you can actually practice. Now you can actually practice the ignore and see exactly how, how it works. So if I go a, b, c, d, x, e, f, g, h, <clears throat> oh, h, that's t. But anyways, it's going to actually go and read up to x and eat the x too. So x is the delimiter. It doesn't have to be new line. It can be anything. OK? So that is, that's how you can actually skip everything and read up to a comma or something, or whatever you want to do. But again, <clears throat> if you do more than that one, so if we actually print, if you actually go more than that one, and I say entering four characters, not four, it's eight, OK? If we do it that way, I'm going to go A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, X, L, M, N, O. You will see that it, because it didn't get to X, it just ignores up to, up to eight characters, and X is just there. Ignore doesn't fail if it doesn't reach to the uh, thing. It just stops. OK? So whichever comes first, that's how it's going to happen. We OK with this? Seeing that ignore num ch dot cpp. That's all about we said about things. So you know flushing. We already talked about it. I don't need to expl explain it again. Uh, uh, extracting uh, strings using extracting strings. So we have to see how extraction. And the string works. So <clears throat> extraction with strings, as we mentioned, it works exactly like a number. It doesn't make any difference. When it reaches to a white space, it's going to stop. OK? So if I enter something like this in here, as you see, I am doing two extractions for two strings. When I run this program, I can go Fred, and I can put as many, oh, as many spaces as I want, and I put over here. And what I read is Fred Soleil, exact. So what happens, it reads, it skips white space characters, and stops at white space characters. You cannot get two things in a string using extraction operator. Extraction operator stops at white space. Um, that's just uh, to put a, uh, some kind of an emphasis on that. Extracting uh, C strings. The next thing, oh, now we're going to come to actually methods of methods of C in. What is the meaning of method? Who has the microphone? When I say, actually, you answered. Give it to the gentleman. When I say method, what do I really mean? It means? The functions of a class. A function of a class, a member function. A member function is a method. So member functions of C in. How do member functions of C in work? OK? Mm -hmm. C in has a very famous type of uh, thing that is called a, a get. So get, what it does, it simply receives one character. That's what it does. So I can actually write something like this. So I can write 
C in get. I can write C in get. It returns one character. So if all you want is one character, that's how it does, how it works. And if you enter anything more, it's going to stay in the keyboard. That's why I'm flushing afterwards. If user is actually a sane user, that never happens. You always have cuckoo people beside the keyboard, especially when you are testing it yourself. You, you have to act like a cuckoo person to make it foolproof, right? So that's the thing. When you want one, they may enter 10. OK, you need to skip the rest. And if they are not cuckoo, we're going to have only one new line. So still, that works. So that's how we're going to do it. So that gets only one character. OK, so if I put A, B, C, D, E, F, it's going to get A, and the rest is flushed. Are we OK? Are you OK with this? CN also accepts reference of a character. So it works the exact same way like this one, but the difference is that <clears throat> you pass the reference of a character to, see, to get. OK, this version of get sets the character exactly like the other one. But the difference is that it returns the C in itself. So it's returning this inside. OK, it returns the C in itself. So you can do other stuff with it afterwards if you want to. You want to get one character. So essentially, I, c I can do this. OK? I read one character, and I ignore the rest. Because this one returns the CN itself. But it works the exact same way. It doesn't make any difference. So if I go Control F5 on this one, it's going to receive A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So that's going to do only E, A, and A, B, C, D. That's going to do only A. No difference. It works the exact same way. Are we OK with this? That's C in get for single characters. Now we have another type of get. get. Another type of get whose job is to actually receive strings. <clears throat> so I can go character str say 10 exactly <clears throat> with no worries. And I can call scene.get and I put str and 10, which essentially means, which essentially means read up to 10 characters or new line, whichever comes first. OK? It works exactly like ignore, but instead of throwing it away, it's putting it somewhere for you. It works exactly. Actually, no, it doesn't work exactly like ignore. It doesn't eat the backslash. The backslash remains in the, in the keyboard. OK? The backslash remains in keyboard, but it works like that. So, so if I, if I if I write something like this, if I write something like, if I execute it, you will see that if I say over here A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, and I, uh, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, P, whatever, L, M, N, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, and I hit enter, oh, it gave me an error, why? Abort. Ten. It shouldn't give me an error. Let me try something. Oh, that's interesting. So now, now I know. So uh, uh, there is a difference between the other one. I used the other function. I'll explain you in five minutes. You're on. You don't understand why I made that mistake. So what happens is that <clears throat> C in dot get, that's actually very bad. See, I made the mistake after 20 years. So you're going to make a mistake too. So we'll find it. That's why I write live so you can actually see. So C in dot get actually gets the number of characters maximum and then all terminates it. OK? Uh, <clears throat> 
and then the rest will be read with the other one. So that J that you see over there, uh, so, uh, and, and I can do this too. So if I say over here, uh, just to show you, in here I'll go <clears throat> like this. I go A, B, C, D, and I hit enter. Reading the rest as you see, <clears throat> because there is an enter that is read, the next C and actually fix it up and nothing happens. I have to enter more things to activate it and it fails. So, so what happens over here is that it leaves, it leaves the backslash and in the buffer. Okay, so it reaches the backslash and it puts everything in there, but leaves the backslash and inside the keyboard, which you don't want. If you don't want, then that's not a good thing to use. You have to remember. C in dot get, if it reaches the backslash n, then that's what's going to do. And obviously, that get thingy, you can actually use it with any type of delimiter that you want. So I can put over here something like, let's say, E. I can do something like this, which means I want it to stop at E, not backslash n. So you can do that if I actually run this. I can go A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, and I hit enter. As you see, A, B, C, D is read into STR, and the rest is picked up with the extraction operator. Okay? But it doesn't eat the delimiter. It uh, uh, leaves it in the keyboard. Okay? So just to... If I put over here backslash n, I'm just going to write it like this. I'm going to say these two are the same. OK? It doesn't matter if you don't put backslash n, backslash n is the default. OK? Are we OK down to this? All right, so that's git. C string length and delimiter. Does equal work in a thing? I can I can put that. Does it work? <laughs> No, it doesn't. Darn it. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm going to put over here. All right. Next one is get line. Now, get line is exactly like get. Get line is exactly like get, but the difference is that you, it's, it's assuming you are receiving something with a delimiter, not with data after. C in, a, C, C in get assumes you are reading up to certain point, but whatever is after is data. It stops at certain thing, but that thing that stops at, it's still data. You need it in the keyboard. C in dot get line says I'm going to read and stop and throw away the delimiter. So if I put an X over here and run it, <clears throat> okay, so I'm reading five. So let me just put over here something so I can see. See out. Uh, reading five cares with C with igno uh, get line. Now with get line, the story is different. I can actually put five over here. So I'll, uh, I'll let me just uh, control C this and run it again. So first I'm gonna put first I'm gonna put A B. C, X, A, uh, and then A, B, C, <clears throat> okay? So if I do something like this, as you see, the first one picks up A, B, C. X is the delimiter. It stops, eaten, thrown away. The rest can be read. That's scenario one. 
Are we okay? Number two. Eek. I'm going to add something in here. Okay, so let's run it again. Now I'm going to go A, B, C, D, X, A, B, C, D. Perfectly good, right? Now take a look at this. A, B, C, D, E, X, a, B, C, D, E. What happened? So, <clears throat> get line, unlike get, first of all, the length that you put includes the null. So you can safely put the string to the exact same line of same thing as get line. Get didn't work that. Um, in 20 years, I didn't know that. I always assumed. I never used get, but uh, that's the thing. So, uh, for get line, you put the exact same size. No worries. If it reaches to that point, it's going to uh, null terminate it and the total number of things. So it's the size of the array, not the string. Number two, if get line doesn't reach to delimiter by the limit that you put over there, it means line is not complete. Because when you are having your line, you assume that your arm must end. If it doesn't end, something's wrong. So it puts C in, in a fail state. So the delimiter must be reached before the length of the get line. If it doesn't, it will fail. That's a good thing. So you can actually ask for user's name. And if they go more than certain thing, you can actually flush the keyboard and say, the string you entered is too long. Shorten it to, have them, to, to enforce the user to actually use certain size. Okay, and also you can use this uh, to dynamically receive information from the keyboard. So let's say you want to receive, uh, this is very tough actually, if you can do it on your own, uh, I would be really impressed and I'm going to give you some extra marks, but you have to tell me how it works. Don't chat GPT it and send it to me. Okay, use get line to dynamically receive string from keyboard. So when you don't know how big the data is, what you can do, you can set an initial size, let's say 20 characters, and read it from keyboard. And dynamically, use a dynamic 20 character string, so 21 or 20, and then read it from string, from screen, from CN using a get line. If it fails, stop, because everything's still in a keyboard, right? Clear it, don't ignore it, resize your your memory, make it 40 lines, do another get line. And then, if it fails again, make it 60, do another get line. And make it so, so the size of the dynamic inf information you are getting is always a little bit less than that 20. After everything is done, resize that to the exact size and return the dynamic memory. Therefore, you can exactly get how many characters you want from the from the keyboard. And, and that's an amazing thing. OK, and you can actually send, uh, like send the, the, the address of the dynamic memory and also the length through the argument list using your reference so they know how many characters were entered. So it's a pretty cool thing you can do. Now maybe if I have time, I'll do it in class so, so you can use it in your utils. But that's what it is. So again. I put this thing over there for you to run it like me and experiment with it. Put different sizes to see exactly how get line works, okay? So that's how get line works. So in here, J, I'm going to say cn.getline. And get line works exactly like, like get. I'm not going to mention to you that the default is new line. If you don't put anything for x, it's new line. That's how it works. 
Okay, so, and it's only two of them, only either two or three. So essentially, it's a three argument function with a default value for the third one that is new line. If you skip the last one, it's going to put new line for you. <clears throat> So now that we have done this, we have enough information to write ourselves a foolproof data entry for something that we want to work with. So I'm going to go to my utils thingy. So I'm going to say add existing item. <clears throat> and I'm going to bring the utils module in here and add something over here to receive an integer for me in a foolproof way. So, so the user cannot go until a perfect integer is entered. And if it's not, I'm just going to grab him and say, keep entering until you can. OK? So how do I do it? <clears throat> First, I need to think uh, a signature for it. So it's an int, get int, and that's it. That's my uh, uh, function that I want to write. <clears throat> and yes, that's the function I want to write. So I'm going to write over here. I'm going to go over here and say create the definition utils. There you go. So that's the integer. So what do I do? The very first thing I do, I'm going to go int num, OK? And I'm going to say return num. Mission accomplished. This function can get compiled and actually will not give me an error. First, we do this. Always do it like this. Write the empty function. Compile it. Make sure you're good. You go compile. Compile. Where's compile? Compile. It's control F7. It compiles it, and everything seems to be fine. Error list. Yeah, did I compile control F7? Yeah, there you go. Compile, and everything is good. Okay. So then what I need to do, I need to get read, uh, start reading stuff. Whenever I need to do validation and things, it means you have to do repetition, right? In these type of cases, when you're doing programming, the easiest way is first to use hello, a flag, which means what I need to do over here is to set a flag for myself and write the loop and then set the flag to whatever I want to, to end the, the loop. So I don't have to think about what the conditions. It should be this and that. And th I'm not going to do that. So the very first thing you do to make your life easy, because it's going to be a conditional exit, I'm going to say Boolean done. And I'm going to say set to false. And in here, I'm going to say while not done, keep going. There you go, done. And whenever I'm done, I'm going to set the done to true, and I'm done. So you don't have to think about what the condition is supposed to be. OK? Next. You OK? All right. You're eyeballing each other. I don't know. It's like, <laughs> it's like something bad is happening. All right. So then what I need to do, I need to read, right? I'm going to go C in num. First of all, I said C in. Because I said C in, I need a, the IO stream. The, um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna have over here using namespace std so I can use my CA. Okay, done. We're good. So as soon as I read, the very first thing I'm gonna go, I'm gonna say if cn.fail. By the way, cn.fail is a function that is the opposite of cn just by itself. So if it fails, it's true. If it's false, it's not. It's the same thing. You can say if cn. But I'm pessimistic now. I'm saying, if it failed, do this for me. If it didn't fail, I don't want to do anything. Right? So I'm going to say, if it failed, if it failed, in here I'm going to say, C out. I said an integer, you gongul. I said, and no, I'm not going to do that. Invalid integer, be polite. Integer, and um, uh, go to, no, like, Put three dots, go to new line, and give it something like that. Then I'm going to say, I'm so sorry that I did this horrible thing to you. And then I'm going to say, CN, ignore, I don't know, some number, and new line. Right? So that's going to take care of that. 
You can run the program right now and see if it works or not. I don't, I'm not, not going to do that. Um, stage by stage, you can go to see if it works. So right now, actually, so in here, uh, in this program right now that I have, I can say include. Include. By the way, you know that you can submit this utils you, using your workshop, right? If you have your utils, you can just put you the, and then write the name of the workshop. It includes the utils. <laughs> and then using namespace SDDS. In here, I'm going to say C out. And int. And obviously, I'm going to have a number. And I'm going to have num is set to get int. And I'm going to say, see out, you entered, you entered. And I'm going to put the num. OK? So when I run the program, <clears throat> obviously, if I go this, then it's going to say invalid integer, right? Then I'll go one, two, three. Oops. What happened? Got to find out. Hit enter again, enter again. It doesn't go out. What? What did I do wrong? Yeah, I have the flag. I didn't set it to right. So otherwise, I have to say done is true, right? I didn't do that, right? So now if I run the program, I'll go one, two, three. It's perfect. If I run the program, I'll go like this. It says invalid integer, one, two, three. Perfect. And if I run this, I said one, two, three is the number I entered. It's still accepted. I don't want that. I want it to only, only enter integer and nothing else. So what do I do? I have to come to the else part. The integer, the C in may be successful. But user may enter stuff after. I don't want that. There is this beautiful function in C language that can look, but don't touch. So you can tell to C in, hey, look what's coming. Don't touch it, though. OK, I can do that. What can I say? I'm going to say over here, if cin.peak, it takes a peak, is not equal to backslash n, it means the user did not end the data entry with backslash n. It put some garbage in there. If that's the case, I do the exact same thing in here. I'm going to say C out. Only an integer, please. New line, and I'll go over here, and then do the exact same thing again. I don't need to clear it this time. Because C in is good. It's just the user that is doing something stupid, right? So now in here, I'm going to say else. Looks good to me. OK, so let's go through this. I get it. If it fails, I say invalid integer, clear, flush, right? Then I peek. Is it integer? No. I say integer only, I flush and go again, right? If it is new line, I'm going to say done is true and go out, right? But I could flush over there too, right? I can ignore one character so nothing is left in keyboard. The keyboard is clean and nice for the next thing to come, right? Because if something in some extract, like if it's a get line afterwards, it's going to fail because get line looks for backslash and it stops, right? I don't want anything to be left in keyboard. I want the keyboard to be clean for the next entry. So what I need to do is to do an ignore over here, right here too. So in here, if it's only a backslash n, c in dot ignore. Now it's going to be clean. Well, wait a minute. If it fails, I'm ignoring. If it doesn't, I'm ignoring. In any way, I'm ignoring. So why do I just write three ignores over here? I can just get this over here and come right before I'm returning. Oh, no, 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 no. Right at the end of the loop, I can just say ignore. In any case, ignore. If it's one, it's going to be one. If it's five million, it's going to be five, not five million. If it's 100,000, it's going to be 100,000. But it's going to ignore anyway, 
Right? Are we okay with this? Are we okay? So now this get int of mine works like this. So if I go one, two, three, it's perfect. If I go hello, it's going to say it's bad. If I say one, two, three, hello, it's going to say only an integer. If I say 10, it's going to say 10. So now the user cannot get out of this damn thing until they enter an integer. So what if I want to get an integer between certain values, minimum and a maximum? Can I do that? Yes. Don't modify this code, though. Write another one, get int, and say int min, int max. Just do a very quick thing like that. Generate the code for it and reuse your code. So in here, all you need to do, do the same thing. So write C, like write, make a, a integer num and, and return the num and all the good stuff you are doing. And in here, and in here, say uh, uh, boolean done because I'm lazy. I'm gonna go uh, set to false, false. Exactly the same thing. I'm gonna say while not done. And then what I'm going to do, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? I'm going to say uh, num is set to get int. Now, if num is less than min or num is greater than, greater than max, then I'm going to say C out. What do I say? Uh, invalid range. Invalid range and then just to help the person to do it properly I'm gonna say over here the range is min shoot I can I need to learn to type uh, min and in here I'm gonna do do something like this and I'm gonna do uh, like this and I'm gonna say number and do like that and I'm gonna say max and do like this and then go to new line and show something like that. Okay. And else done is equal to true. Please, please notice that even if I have one line, I, I open the curly bracket and I close it. Please do it that way. Don't put it, say that because it's only one line. Keep be consistent in what you're writing so I don't get blind when I'm checking your code. Okay. So that's that. Now I wrote another thing that accepts a minimum and a maximum, right? So in here I'm going to say uh, enter age, and in here I'm going to put uh, I don't know 18 and 64, which means I want to find out an adult. Why it didn't work? I didn't put the. Ooh. What did I do? Did I put it in here? Where did I put the? Where the save sorry I put it in the wrong place now it's better so so now I'm checking to see if the person is adult okay so now if I put over here six it's gonna say invalid range if I do like this it's gonna say invalid integer if I go I don't know 16 whatever it's gonna say only an integer please now if I put over here 50 it's gonna say 50 <laughs> it's gonna say you entered 50 you follow? Foolproof entry. Done. You can do it with anything. Double, schmubble, whatever you are doing. CN will help you. Just make sure you just check to see if CN fails or not. And you go from there. Questions? Yes. I didn't. No. Okay, go English. I say while not done. I'm saying why not finish drink. You're gonna drink until it's finished, right? That's what I'm doing over there. But I start with the false. It means I'm not done. Done is false. Okay, let me sh let me show you. I say I make done false. Then I'm gonna say while not done. Why you are thinking like that? Think English. If done is true, I am done, right? When it's done is false, I'm not done, right? 
And that says in English, while not done, do this. While you're trying to translate it. Okay? While not done, of course it becomes true, which means while it's true, which means it's going to keep going. While stops when it's done. It's a flag. <laughs> yes, it means I'm done. Don't do it again. When done becomes true, it goes up. Now, if you want to analyze it, when done becomes true, it goes up. Done is true. Not true is. Why loop stops? No more data entry. Finished. I get out of the function. It's English. Why not done? Do this. I mean, there's nothing more obvious than that. That's over, you're overanalyzing it, my dear. Okay, just read the English. So that was the eyeballing the bell, right? <laughs> All right, are we okay? Yes, sir. Peak is to peak. I don't know. Peak is like peak. Just looks at the next character that is coming and tells you what it is without taking it out. That's all. So? No, no, it's one of the methods of CN. It's a standard method of CN. Yeah. Actually, yeah. It has CN as crazy stuff. CN, for example, has a function called put back. You can actually put a key character back into keyboard if you want. We're not going to go there, but you can do crazy stuff like that too. Okay? I'm not going to go there, but. There are so many different, like, if I, just to see the, n the number of things you can do, go C and dot, and just keep go through. These are the things that C and can do, right? And I don't, we don't want to, we don't want to go there, but, yeah. Marvel of intelligence. Okay, are we okay? Perfect. Please, five minutes break, not 45. Five minutes break, go come back, and we're going to start... Uh, uh, talking about operators. So this is one of the very few times that you 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 will see my ugly handwriting. Uh, um, so let's do it. We're gonna talk about. We're gonna talk about. We're gonna talk about. Uh, Operators. We want to understand how operators act and what uh, they do. We want to analyze to see exactly how they work. So then we can actually talk about operator overloading and see if we can actually take over and give them new meaning. Okay. So the very first thing we need to understand is that uh, we have two types of operators. We the operators are I. Uh, really, you're chatting with someone. Okay. <laughs> All right. Stop it. Okay. So, things that you see. Anyway, so uh, uh, there are two types of operator. First of all, we have to understand what, when we say operator, what does it mean? Operator is essentially whatever we have in math, like plus, minus, things like that. So when I do something like this, I put a plus over here like that as an operator. That operator accepts two arguments. Uh, who has the microphone? You have the microphone. <laughs> okay, so do you know what the arguments, so if I say over here A and B, these two are arguments of the operator. Do you know what they call the argument of an operator? Operand, correct. The microphone, but it's okay. Operand. So when I say operators of an operand, uh, of an operator, uh, um, operands of an operator, essentially it means the argument it accepts, which means when I actually write an, uh, an operator, uh, like whatever this operator means, it's going to do its business with these two and it's going to return some value. Okay? That's what it does. That's what any operator does. So the example for that is you write something like, I don't know, 3 plus 5. What does this do? It gets the left operand, and the right operand finds the sum and returns the value 8 back somewhere. Correct? That's what it does. That's, that's a binary operator. Binary operators can be in two different ways. They can have side effect and not have side effect. This doesn't have a side effect. This 3 plus 5 
it doesn't have side effects. Three and five remain three and five afterwards. So essentially, if I have in here something like something like A being five and B being three, and if I say A plus B, A and B remain five and three after it's done. We okay with this? That's an operator with no side effect. We have another type of operator that has a side effect in C language, which is something like A plus equal B. Okay? This operator has side effect. What does it mean? When actually it gets the two values, obviously, 3 and 5, and the result is 8, it returns the 8. Correct? But after it's done, the value of a from 5 is changed to 8. So we call these type of binary operators binary operators with side effect. They change the value of the operands beside them. Okay? In, in standard operators we have in C, there is no operator that changes the right-hand side operator operand. There is no operator that changes B in this case. They all change A, right? But we can change that. We'll see. So we're okay down to this point? So binary operators, two types, no side effect. It means it just they just take the value of the operands, whatever they are supposed to do. They return a value, or they return a value, and at the same time, they change the operand somehow. Then we have unary operators. Unary operators come before prefix unary operators. They come before the operand. So if I say over here something like this, they get the value, do something that they, to that thing, and return some value for us. For example, I can say over here, minus a. If I say minus a, minus a gets the value of a that is 8 and returns minus 8. Correct? That's a unary operator. It changes one thing. We have stuff like not b. What not b does considers b as a true or false value. Because b has 3 in it, not 3 becomes 0. Therefore, it returns 0. Right? Another operator that is very famous and is used a lot and has side effect is the assignment operator. I can actually write over here a B, the job of this binary operator is to set the value of the left operand to the right operand and then return it, which in this case, A will actually have the value of 3, and then it's going to be returned. So 3 is going to be returned over here, and the value that we had for the A will change from 8 to 3. Are we okay with that? Are we okay with that? All right. So that's that. Binary operators, and we have one more thing, operator that only is in C language, okay? That operator is postfix unary operator. A postfix unary operator is something like this, okay? And by the way, unary operators can have side effect too. You know that, right? So let me just, before that, if I go over there, over here, if I say over here, uh, plus, plus A, if I do something like that, it returns the plus plus of that one, which becomes minus 7. Oh, actually, it becomes 3 now. So it becomes 4, and it sets the value of A to 4 afterwards, right? So that plus plus has side effect, a unary operator with side effect, right? And uh, the postfix operator works the same way. The postfix operator goes after the thing, so essentially something like B minus minus, doing something like that. So what B minus minus returns is, what does it return over here? The standard B minus, it returns 3, and then reduces the value of B by 1, so B becomes 2 afterwards. Right? Postfix operators, so this minus minus and plus plus are the only two postfix operators. We don't have anything else. You can have B plus plus. It's still visible over there, right? Yeah. You can have B plus plus. You can have whatever. So this plus plus that comes after 
is only so plus plus and minus minus are only two postfix operators we have in C language. There is no other one. All right? And the behavior that it has in it, which when it comes before, it changes the value before and then return it. When it's after, it returns the value and then changes it is something that is only in this operator. But we don't have any other operator to, that works like that. Are we okay with this? Right? Okay. Now let's talk about operators and see actually how, how we can actually deal with an operator. Let's say I have a class called integer. I want to create a smart integer, not an integer that just works like that. I want an integer that I can do stuff with it, okay? Uh, I can set minimum and maximum, so if I want to set it, it won't accept the values, things like that. Write a smart integer. To do that, first I'm going to try to replicate the regular integer we have and nothing else. So what I need to do over here is this, that integer thingy that I have. So that's my class integer. The very first thing that I created for it is a constructor. So an integer has a value in it, and I'm setting the value to something. Are you okay with that? Right? Okay. <clears throat> Now, I want to add an integer to another integer. I want to get the value of an integer and add it to another integer. What can I do? I can write a function like this. I can write a function like uh, uh, add. And this add that I have over here uh, receives uh, an integer. Uh, I. And it returns an integer like that. OK? So that's my function. So um, yeah, so add what it does. So when I actually, so I want to write this function to make two integers to be able to be added to each other. And obviously, I need a print too. And we know from what we talked about uh, that uh, all the prints that we have we, we must go std o stream reference print uh, std o stream reference uh, OSDR set to std c out. We know that we are supposed to set it like that. That's a mandatory thing that we need to do. We, we talked about that. So I have the add over there, and I'm going to have the print over here. OK? So print, what, what it does is very simple. It simply prints the, prints the, the value. So I'm going to go OSDR, and I'm going to print M value in here, and I'm going to return it. So that's as simple as it can get. The add thingy that I have <clears throat> is going to add the value of an integer that is coming into mine. So in here, I'm going to say, uh, first of all, uh, let's make it a reference so I don't pass stuff by value because now I know how references work. And in here, I'm going to say, and at right side, I'm going to receive a reference to why do I pass things by value? We don't want that. And because I don't want to change the right one, I make it constant. So I'm going to make it constant. And then in here, what I'm going to, constant. And then in here, I'm going to say, why this add is? Oh, reference, reference, reference. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. OK. And then what I'm going to do over here, I'm going to say m value plus equal i dot m value, right? And then return this. Simple as that. So I'm writing a function that adds something to me and returns the value. So in here, I can have integer include integer.h. So I can say integer i set to 5, uh, j. Oh, I didn't put a default value. Let's put a default value for here, 0, so I can just uh, have a default constructor. j 
uh, set to, let's say, 3 and k. So I have three integers over here, i, j, and k. First, let's print them one by one. So in here, I'm going to say uh, i the print and go to new line, j the print, go to new line, k the print, go to new line, right? And I'm going to print them. So I'm going to have 3, 5, and 0 printed, right? Very simple. Now in here, I'm going to say I want to add the value of j to i. So I'm going to say i dot add. I pass j over here, OK? And now I'm going to print them again. So obviously, we know that it's going to add the value to that one and become 8. There is no question about that. Are we OK with this? Anybody have any problem with what I've written over here? Let me just bring the source code over here so we can see exactly what the function is doing. Are we okay with this? Very simple, right? Right? And this add kind of looks like plus equal, right? It kind of adds the value of the right one to the current one. And it can also return it. So in here, I can say, well, I can say actually k is set to that one, right? Because i is returning this. Add is returning this, which in this case will be i. So I'm going to have two objects with the same type pointing. Uh, so uh, it can just blind copy one to another. So k becomes 8, 2. Now if I run the program, it's going to do like this, right? And in here, I can actually say, let me just do it like this. I'm going to go. C out i and C out j, so we know which one is what, and C out k. I think that's better so we can actually see what is what. Are we good? Everyone? Are we okay? Down to this point? Now get ready. I'm not going to, just please take a look at what I'm doing in here. I'm going to come in that integer thingy. I'm just going to change the name of the add. Okay, so I'm going to copy it over here so we don't get scared. I'm going to change the name of add over here to operator plus equal. I didn't do anything. Just renamed it. I'm not changing. I'm just renaming the, the, the function name to operator plus equal. So in here, when I say add, I'm going to say operator plus equal. No magic. I just changed the name, renamed it, called it whatever, right? If I run the program, it works the exact same way. Absolutely no difference. It's just that function call, it comes over here and goes through it. So all these things are printed. We know that they're printed. We're not going to bother with it. It just got printed. Now, the function operator plus will be called. It comes over here, calls the function, whatever it's supposed to do, and then it returns back and prints everything again. Are we okay with that? Anybody have any problem with this, what, with what I wrote? Now I can, do, I can use the function type that I created, or I can use the operator type of calling. So instead of doing that, I can actually say k is set to i plus equal j. It's the same. Didn't we say? Operate operators except to uh, operands. That's what is happening. That plus equal at line 13 is accepting two operands, correct? Left and right. In this case, left is the owner. And right is the argument is accepting. And returns a thing. So it is exact same function call that I'm using. and goes to the exact same function, no difference. You see that? So all you need to learn 
is to how to write the function that relates to an operator. You want to have i and j added to each other without ha having a side effect like a plus? No problem. I can do that. How do we do it? Let's add two more things over here. Like I'm going to add a, b, c over here. a set to uh, 1 and b set to 2 and c set to s nothing. So just make sure that math is not going to be a factor over here <laughs> so everybody knows how 1 plus 2 works, right? So now I want to have something like this. I want to have c is a equal to a plus b. And then I want to be able to print it. So in here is going to be A, B, C, and A, B, C. Now the person with the microphone. What is the type of the left argument of plus? Yes. Integer. See, easy, right? So it's integer. So we can say we can assume the function that's going to be, be here is supposed to be C is set to A dot operator plus, exactly like the other one. And at right side, what is the argument? B, that is like that. So I write the operator version. Exactly like the other one, right? So you implement that, you're going to have the plus. So what do I do in here? I'm going to come right over here in this integer thingy, and I'm going to write, again, I have to return an integer, obviously, because it's supposed to return an integer, operator plus. And in here, at right side, I'm not supposed to change the right operand, integer. So now in here, I'm going to call it right operand. I'm not going to call it i anymore, because I want to know it's a right operand, right operand, right? And then I have to write the code for this. So I'm going to come over here and create the thing. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Here. Okay. So now in here, what I need to do, I need to do the value addition thingy without changing the current object, correct? Because it's not supposed to have a side effect, right? How do I do that? Let's just create a temporary integer. I'm going to create integer, seriously, integer result. And in the constructor, I'm going to pass m value plus right operands dot m value, correct? So result will be an integer that has both. Now in here, I'm going to say return result, but wait. Result is a local argument, local variable. I cannot return the reference because if I return the reference, it's going to die. Nothing's going to be there. So I'll remove the reference. I don't have to return a reference. I'm going to return it like that. I'm not going to return the reference. Done. Okay? So what else I need to do? I need to make sure that I'm not going to be stupid and change the current object. How do I make a function not to change its owner? All I need to do is to say const in here. And done. I overloaded the operator. Finished. As simple as that. All you need to do is to practice and see exactly which one is what. All operators, they are functions. You see that, right? There's no magic, OK? It's method. It's a function. So you can actually create, op we can overload operators that are not members. You can create a function that is standalone, as if I wrote a function called add that receives two integers and returns an integer. I could do that, but don't, unless you have to. There are in two scenarios only that you need to create an operator that is not a member of a function, a member of a class. Number one. The left side is not a class. If I want to add this integer to a regular integer, left one is a regular integer. I cannot make it a member. 
That's a regular function. I don't need to make it a member. We call these helper functions. Or the left one, you don't have access to its source code. It's a class that you cannot change its source code. For example, iStream. Let's say you want to put at left side of something, C out, and at right side, something else. If you want to do that, then how you do it? You don't have access to C dot iStream.h to go modify the class. Because of that, you create what we call a helper function. A helper function is not a member of anything. Okay? We'll see that we will come to that soon. So now what we do over here, so now if I run this program, you will see that it actually runs as follows. It comes over here that we know it happens. When it comes to here, it actually goes to operator plus, creates the result, returns the result, and sets C to that one. Therefore, A, B, and C are going to return the values. A and B won't change, but C becomes 3, because that's how we designed it. OK? Again, as like it's, it's, it's so simple that it makes you worry that, am I, did I, am I getting it right? Just, just let me show you something else, like to show you how easy it is to create uh, uh, an operator overload. Um, I, can, I can demonstrate how to, to do minus. Come on, give me a break. How do you minus equal, divide equal? All those things is like that. As a practice, go and do all those things to this. The binary with no side effect and binary with side effect. Implement all of them and make sure it works like an integer. But I'm going to do something even crazier than that. I want my integer, so let's save this. Uh, KL, I'm going to call it uh, in, uh, operator overload dot CPP. Uh, give me something unary for, like, uh, like if I want to have minus A as unary operator, if I want to have minus A as unary operator, minus operator, unary operators are members with no argument. If I want a unary operator minus created to negate the value, all I need to do is this. If I want to have something like A is equal to minus C, if I want to do that, again, this minus is a unary operator, which means it is only a member. It doesn't accept any operand. C is the owner of minus. So all I need to do is to come over here and create an integer operator minus that doesn't accept anything. And because it doesn't operator. Oh, somebody help me dictate this thing. Operator, OK? And obviously, it's not going to change me. So this is what I'm going to do. And you create it like that. So essentially, you are returning an integer. And all you need to do is to create, again, integer integer result with the value minus m value, right? So you create an integer with the negative value of what you have now, and you return it. Return res. Now that's going to work exactly like what you wanted, a unary operator that accepts minus c. So when you run it, Go to cursor. Oops. Run to cursor went over everything. Oh, shoot. I keep changing the wrong thing. Sorry. Program. Paste. Sorry, I uh, modified the wrong file. Let's save that. So if I go around to cursor, <clears throat> it goes to the unary operator minus. It creates a res with negative value of that one and returns it. And therefore, A becomes a negative value. That's a unary operator. As you see, it's minus 3. Now, I'm going to do something even crazier.
what if I, and we have one minute to do this, we're going to continue it the next day. What if I want What if I want to do this? How can I do that? I want to print my integer like all the integers would see out. Why should I call dot print? The operator that I have left thingy, okay, the left shift of the insertion operator, what is the left operand? Gentleman with the microphone. What is the left operand? Out. What is the type of C out? O string. O string. So it left the argument, left operand is O string. What is the right operand? I. I, which is integer, correct? Integer. So because I cannot go and change I stream, I'm going to create a function that doesn't belong to anyone. So I'll put a function out here and I'm going to call it operator. At left side, I'll receive I stream, I S T R, sorry, O stream, reference O S T R. At right side, I receive a constant integer reference, whatever uh, I, whatever I have, and it's going to return the O stream to create cascading for me. And that's it. Of course, I have to put a std over here and std over here. So this is now an opera, a, a function that is standalone and accepts two arguments, two operands. That's the left operand. The other one is the right operand. And it, I implement that, and you see that error is gone over there. I implement that, and everything is gone. First of all, I have to design my function properly. Print should be constant because it's not changing the function. The, the string, I told you that you always have to make sure that you follow the rules. And then if I want to just create this, save everything, come on, I have two seconds, and it takes, takes only two seconds. Where, oh, okay, semicolon, oh, shoot. I hate these things that they add in. You click somewhere and, <laughs> thank you. I cannot put my mouse over there. Okay, now I'm going to generate the, the thing for it. Uh, and all I need to do over here is to say I dot print and I pass the O string to it because that's what I does, right? And in here I'm going to say return. And done. Now C out can print my, my integer. Three years later. Four years, oh, I have to stop first. There you go. Walk through that, and we're going to come back, and we're going to go through it. So operator is very easy. You just need to recognize. The next day you are coming, I teach you how to recognize the signature so you can implement it. Are we done? <laughs> Give that microphone back to me when you're done. <laughs>